Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Afterburners Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Niedemeyer, and with me as always, Rec Fantasy himself, Mr. Bobby Koch. Bobby, it is July 11th, that means free Slurpees. Did you get a free Slurpee today? I did not, and I was also waiting for you to say the date. It doesn't feel like an official Afterburners pod until like the Daily Show music plays, but only in my head because we don't actually edit that in. It is Wednesday. July 11th, 2018. Yeah, there we go. So they have free Slurpees today. You didn't get one? No, I did not. I didn't either. I'm a loser. But you know what was fun? What we did on Monday, we were part of the Falafel House podcast. That was, that was a good time, wasn't it? We were. We really enjoyed that. And a uh, huge shout out to Sal, Stephen, and Kevin for putting that on. I know they raised, I think, close to $4,000. So definitely yep. check that out if you haven't. I think they have some recordings of it up or going up soon. Yeah, you can find them over at Falafel House uh, I, believe, I believe that's just Falafel House Pod. Yeah, I mean that's it. And uh, they had a, they did a twenty four hour uh, potathon, I guess, or telethon. Potathon. It's on YouTube. You could watch it. It got really funny. Well, obviously with us, but then from the nine thirty to ten thirty hour with uh, with Shane and uh, some of the other guys. That he's For those who don't ridiculous. know, I think Sam just has a huge man crush on Shane Manila. So. There you have it. I'll tell you what. I have two new man crushes. They are new hosts of the, or excuse me, new guests of the episode today. They are the co-hosts of Dynasty Owners Manual. We have Chris Allen and Adam Wild. Adam, Chris, what's up, buddies? How are you doing today? You tell him, Adam. You go. You go first, man. <laughs> oh, no, Chris just wants me to tell you that it's Wildy because I never tell anybody. But I actually yeah, we're, doing great. we're doing great, man. We can't we can't wait to get into this. Uh, Chris and I are infatuated with being on other people's show and not our own. <laughs> I, I have to like I totally agree because the like the prep work and like trying to figure out if we're coming up with like entertaining content and all the other stuff that we have to do every week in order to get the guest ready. We don't have to do that. We can just come here and spit hot takes with you guys. So I'd rather do that in a heartbeat. So thanks for having us on. Yeah, definitely. And uh, anytime um, I can be on brand and mispronounce last names. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, I, I do that myself. So I've had to actually confirm with I try and do that with every one of our guests to make sure that I'm pronouncing it correctly, regardless of even if it looks like something simple phonetically. I always have to ask to make sure because knowing my luck, I'll probably wind up mispronouncing it and then looking like a jackass and that I mean, I, i've done it twice i've been on chris people have had to ask how to pronounce my last name to be fair mispronouncing my last name is a little dangerous yes so mm-hmm. i'll give them that yeah <laughs> so as i said uh chris and adam are the co the co-hosts of dynasty owners manual i'm going to have to take a couple breaths as i go through all of chris's <laughs> accolades here so bear with me for a second He's a contributor at Fantasy Football Coach Couch, two QBs, four for four, and a draft day consultant. Is that right? Yeah, that I think that about sums it up. Oh, and also uh, fan tracks. I also I also write for them as well. Yeah, and he will be taking over a universe near you. He's actually going to be entering the Galactic Space Force as the first commander, probably propaganda minister as well. On the other hand, we also have Adam who is merely just a writer for Dynasty, Dynasty Happy Hour, again, also the co-host as well. So how does it make you feel, Adam, that uh, your your pod mate here is kind of overshadowing you with credentials? Yeah, I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> 100%. I think that's the best method. But to be honest with you, I think I have to give all the credit to Adam because when we first came up with the, I guess, the idea for the podcast, I mean, he was the one that had all the connects. I mean, he... He's well known within the dynasty community, and really, he was the one that kind of put me in touch with. Well, I mean, that's pretty much how I got uh, start talking with you, Bobby, and with a number of other folks. So, I mean, when it comes to the dynasty owners manual, I think all the all the power goes through that guy right there. I'm just the mouthpiece. That's it. <laughs> it's quite oh the bromance we have going on here. It's very endearing. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, but I still give him shit because we actually met each other uh, a few months ago. And he managed to pick the only bar in all of Baltimore that didn't have the beer that I was looking for, or <laughs> not even the specific beer, the type of beer. Not I mean, even I IPAs, not a single IPA. Not a single IPA. I don't understand like how you can wind up finding a, like a place in Baltimore that has a number of different breweries. And I went to almost a different one the whole week I was there for a training class. The one place that he suggests to go doesn't have any ipas and i will never let him forget it it was just the the burgers were good <laughs> they were i mentioned this on the potathon, but 
uh, you know, it's like the scene from Goodwill Hunting where if you're not giving your friends shit, I'd be kind of worried about it. Like that to me is male friendship. The scene with the burger in the front of the car defines male friendship. So on the podathon, all of a sudden Sam was saying all these nice things about me. And I thought like, did I murder his mom or something? Like yeah, we can't have that. Yeah. On me. You can't say that many nice things about me. It's just weird. I was yeah. on a lot of pills at the time. <laughs> Also, one more, one more quick question. Whenever I go to Baltimore, I always have to have a natty bow. That's just that's. I just feel like I have to whenever I go to Baltimore. Is it, you don't well, not a no natty bow fan, Chris? Uh, like I sampled one like while I was there. Not a huge fan, to be quite honest with you. All right, fair enough, guys. Let's get started. So we have uh, Chris and Adam, obviously of the Dynasty Owners Manual. Great show today, Chris. Huge fan of the Cincinnati Bungles. Adam is a big, big fan of the Washington Redskins, so we're going to talk Alex Smith, Andy Dalton, maybe Matt Barkley. I don't know if we have enough time. From there, we've got a couple other questions. We're going to go over what you guys are doing over at Dynasty Owners Manual. Before we get started, though, Adam, break us off where we can find you on Twitter. Chris, follow up, and then Bobby and I are going to get cracking. Yeah, you find me at DHH underscore Adam, and then you'll also find me running the Dynasty Owners Manual Twitter. That's at Dynasty Manual. Yes, and please definitely give that handle a follow because the more folks that retweet some of the work that we've been doing over there, the more guests, and then it kind of snowballs from there. And you can find me on Twitter at Chris Allen FFWX. And then as Sam and Bobby were going through like all the different places that I write for, or do editing four for four, couch coach, uh, all that stuff, uh, you'll probably see my work somewhere. Hopefully, at least you'll definitely see his work. And uh, they're too humble to say it, but. They had a new episode dropped today for the Dynasty Owner's Manual, and that's with our pal Leo P. And he gave a great insights into Dynasty psychology, which is a topic I'm always talking about. So if you haven't listened to their new episode yet, make sure you do it. Also, make sure you listen to all the past episodes. Uh, you can probably ignore episode two. Some joker was on that one. Uh, yeah, he was kind of weird. Yeah. I mean, his dog was like barking in the background for like the I can't first like, five or ten minutes name. of it. Yeah, but you can definitely uh, everybody should check out the show uh, at this point. If you're listening to the podcast, you know where to find me and where to find my work. But just in case you're someone new from the different SSB followers that I've gotten, you can find me at Rekt Fantasy. That's R-E-K-E-D Fantasy. And my work is on DLF football as well as uh, two quarterbacks. And like Chris, I'm a draft day consultant. Yeah, obviously, uh, this is the Afterburners pod. You can find this on Podbean, Stitcher, and iTunes. I don't know how many reviews we're at. I think we're at three. Uh, we're a little more than that. Oh, are we? You're doing a good job pushing it out. We're there. at like five or six last I checked. We're not quite to the 10 we needed to get for us to consider pushing out T-shirts. But if we can get up to now 15, we're revoking the offer for free T-shirts. That was only for that week. But if we can get up to 15 T-shirts... Those who have already given reviews will get free T-shirts. And while you're doing that, go ahead and follow Dynasty Owners Manual Podcast on Twitter as well. Guys, I mentioned a second ago that Adam is a huge Redskins fan. I'm assuming huge because he's wearing also a beautiful, beautiful hat. That's the Stanley Cup champion, Washington Capitals, as we were talking beforehand. Uh, big move in the offseason, letting Kirk Cousins go, bringing Alex Smith over as a fan. Is that a good move, Adam? Uh, I think it's an excellent move. I might actually like him a little bit more now. I'm famous for telling everybody I hate everything about the Redskins except for the fact that I was born there. But, I mean, he's. I'll just go through some of the key reasons why I really like it a lot real quick. Um, looking at his stats, I was actually super surprised. I was already a big Alex Smith fan because I like the way he plays the game, which is by not losing. Um, but above 65% completion – for four seasons and he hasn't thrown double digit picks since 2010. So that was the first two things that impressed me a lot. Uh, last year broke the 4,000 yard mark, but I'm not sure the weapons are the same for the Redskins. And by that, I mean, they're not close. Uh, Reed is the perfect target for him. The only problem is that you might get max six games out of Jordan Reed, uh, but he is matched up with his buddy Vernon Davis again. So, you know, when Reed goes down, they've still got that connection. Um, I like it a lot for the team. I think his third down situation is a lot better than it was last year with Charkandrick West. Might keep him on the field more. Love him in fantasy. So, yeah, I'm real excited about that. 
Um, I think in total, I mean, if you look at Alex Smith from 2017 and then pretty much any other year prior to that, I think most folks would agree that the 2017 year was an anomaly, but that's okay. I mean, to me, at least it, it makes me feel like he has the capability of producing in the way that we would want a QB1 to produce. So regardless of if the weapons have changed, so sure he's not going to have Travis Kelsey, sure he's not going to have Tyreek Hill, but he has enough field stretchers in both either if you want to look at, if you think Josh Doxson is going to make the turn, if you think Paul Richardson, uh, Paul Richardson is going to have some sustained success as he comes over from Seattle, regardless, he has the field stretchers, he has Jamison Crowder in order to work the middle of the field, assuming Chris Thompson's ready to go, he also has somebody out of the backfield. Darius Geis, even though it wasn't a huge part of his game when he was at LSU, I think he still has the capability of catching targets or catching passes out of the backfield. So I think he has enough playmakers in front of him in order to continue that type of success. Sure, he's going to come down to earth. I mean, we're not going to expect him to be making, you know, 40, 50, 60 uh, deep passes and completing like over 50 percent of them. That's fine. But if he's still putting up a decent amount of yards every like each uh, each week and still keeping that TD to interception ratio ratio in the positive. I think that he's still going to be of value to fantasy owners in 2018. That's why I like he was one of my uh, definitely one of my late round targets, whether it be in best ball redraft. I also grabbed him in the Scott Fishbowl. So I think that a lot of folks are not necessarily sleeping on him, but I do think that I think there's some uh, hesitation in making sure that what we saw in 2017 is going to be the same as what we're going to see here in the upcoming season. And just to be clear, folks, so even though both Chris and I write for two QBs and Sal Stefanelli is the biggest Alex Smith fan on the planet, we are not contractually obligated to say nice things about Alex Smith. I know it might sure. seem that way, but we're not. In fact, early, what I was going to mention is, so I like Alex Smith. I think that his game matches up well with a lot of the Redskins weapons, particularly I think he and Jameson Crowder are going to be very good friends very quickly. And Chris Thompson, if he remains healthy. And as Adam mentioned, Jordan Reed as well, but he doesn't generally remain healthy. But what I was going to mention, which was, I guess, slightly concerning, although you can do this with any player, is earlier today, I saw some clips of Alex Smith being, and it, someone was basically mocking the fact that he was rated number one on deep passes in the season last year. And it was a bunch of like tipped passes into like Tyreek Hill's hands or Tyreek Hill just juking a bunch of guys, making Alex Smith look a bunch better than he actually was so that's somewhat interesting but that's also not really from past seasons his game anyway so i think you're right he is a back end qb1 high end qb2 type guy and i don't really have too much else to add besides that do you have anything to add sam look i'm going to be the contrarian here kelsey was targeted 332 times over the last three years i don't see anyone on the redskins coming even close to being one matching his physical prat, like how good Travis Kelsey is too. Like I don't see anyone absorbing 332. So average that out to what a hundred, what is that? 111, 112 targets. Who's going to be the guy this year for him? Well, I had a very long debate with a huge Travis Kelsey fan, which actually turned me into a huge Travis Kelsey fan between Travis Kelsey and Jordan Reed. And I said that Jordan Reed was just as, as much of an athlete as Travis Kelsey and probably more. Um, he did show me some clips of Travis Kelsey that surprised me and some routes that I didn't anticipate he could run. But the problem with Jordan Reed has always been staying on the field. He is 100% of the time a top three tight end if he were to remain on the field. So if the case is who's going to absorb the Travis Kelsey targets, well, I would guess you would have to say Jordan Reed and Vernon Davis for the case of Alex Smith, since we're not here to talk about Jordan Reed. Uh, so that's where I wouldn't be too worried about. Vernon Davis did great in spot duty and has already played very, very well with Alex Smith You know, years ago. Uh, I don't see that being a problem, picking up the Travis Kelsey issue. Uh, but the field stretcher is what's going to end up being the problem. And as was alluded to by Bobby, that's not his game anyway. So I don't really need anybody to stretch the field too much. I need Jameson Crowder to get open underneath. Alex Smith isn't going to throw to anyone that's covered whatsoever. He kind of plays like Dak Prescott. That's why uh, Dez is out of there. So P. Rich might stretch the field a bit, but uh, Chris hit the nail on the head with uh, the Chris Thompson and the Crowders and definitely Jordan Reed when he's healthy. 
All right, the, the, but the only thing that I would add to it is that uh, not only I think that works in Alex Smith's favor is are the weapons that we've all discussed so far, is also the offensive scheme that he's going to. So with Andy Reid, I mean, we could see that a lot of the weapons that they had, they were able to fully utilize anybody. I mean, whether, I mean, we look for Tyreek Hill, we look for Travis Kelsey, we look for Kareem Hunt as, as of last year, but then there were also flashes of like Chris Conley. There were flashes of Albert Wilson when he was healthy. There were flashes of, I mean, insert player here. Hell, even Demetrius Harris, I think, even made a couple of appearances. So if we're also looking for the ancillary players that can work within that offense, you could you could take the same concept and look at Jay Gruden's offense since it's also a spready type offense that looks at making sure that it, it doesn't necessarily have to be the number one target or at least the number one fantasy target that we would come to think of as being the person that would be wide open. So if Alex Smith is not known to be a gamer, if Alex Smith is not known to be that guy that takes chances, but he is known to be that guy that will hit the target that's wide open, I think he's going to an offense that's going to make sure that his receivers get open. So regardless, I do think that there is a case to be made for Alex Smith to have at least continued success. And I'm sure that a lot of the main fantasy targets that we discussed are going to get theirs. It's just that I think what it all connects, it all comes back to Alex Smith, right? And the saying that we've all heard that, you know, the syrup is greater than the pancakes. I do think that everybody's going to wind up getting theirs. I just think Alex Smith is going to be the one that's the greatest beneficiary to all of that. And that kind of leads into uh, my question, which was just going to be, it sounds like, and I didn't hear his name mentioned from either of you. So it sounds like just by absence of not being mentioned, you're both a bit concerned about, Josh Doxson's production with Alex Smith. Is that correct? Or do you guys think Josh Doxson will produce with Alex Smith? No, the problem with Josh Doxson is, is that he's more of that high point player and he's not much of a burner. Um, I do think that he, he's got a chance. He's got a very, very small percent chance of hitting at this point. But I will say that he's had a little weird of a start to his career. So it's kind of hard to count him out. And I've, I went to the Raiders game where he put up some great numbers and he did look the part of a wide receiver one, but you just, you can't do it one game a year. Uh, what I did forget to mention though, is the offensive line is also above average, just like the chiefs offensive line was pretty good. And I would like to say that Darius guys might have similar production of Kareem Hunt on the ground, and I'm talking about, you know, leading rusher in the NFL type of production. So, you know, that's going to help him a little bit there, too. And then Chris Thompson, as I said, in the third down rule, uh, Chris made the best point ever saying, you know, everybody might be kind of good, but that's going to mean Alex Smith is really good. I think the main concern when it comes to Josh Doxson is, I mean, if you look at his previous track record, it's very hard for me to at least assume, uh, like to project him into a role where he just becomes the wide receiver one on that team. Uh, the injuries, uh, you know, just being like the misfires with Kirk Cousins. I mean, all of that just kind of leads me to believe that he's still developing as a wide receiver. And it's hard for me to see at, what is he, he's 26, 27? No, 26. He's 26. 26. Just turned, I think. Yeah, 26. So, I mean, at this point in a wide receiver's career, I mean, you're looking for them to be, I would say, not necessarily established, but you can you can see the breakout coming because when it comes to dynasty, when it comes to wide receivers in their career, I mean, their prime is within the next couple of years. You're looking that from that 27 to 29, 30, year, 30 years old range, like where they're supposed to be in their prime. I don't think Josh Doxson is ready for his prime yet. He still needs at least a season of, I would say, at least wide receiver two value or wide receiver two production for us to even think that he's going to be ready to assume that wide receiver one role. And he's just not there yet. I mean, he's just not. I mean, the guy catches the ball and he falls down. He makes a great play and then he falls down. So it's again, I, I would need to see it in order for me to believe that he's capable of assuming that role in 2018. So one thing that Adam brought up that I think is really interesting is talking about the offensive line. Now, last year they were number one, they were injured. So take whatever I'm about to say, it's a great assault. I mean, they were so injured. They had like third stringers from middle from the middle school teams around. They had like, Josh Doxton falling down on the and line for the, them. They brought some probably county to, to come in and play play there. But uh so Pro Football Rankings has them ranked twenty first last year, which Shocks my mind. As I said, it was like a bunch of third and fourth ringers. When they had the Kansas City Chiefs ranked 15th, 
I, I've, I don't know how these these rankings. Uh, Pro Football Focus, obviously, they're 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 pretty much the creme de la creme when it comes to doing these rankings. They're pretty much the best ones when it comes to it. So I'm not going to knock on that. I, I just think these these rankings are a little off. Now, are you guys worried about the Redskins' offensive line? I, I just think they're perennially bad every year. Am I wrong here? Is it just because I watch them on Fox all the time and I hear people complain? Uh, they're typically above average. Last year was supposed to be exceptionally above average. Uh, they actually, I don't want to misspeak on the number, but I did say it on our pod. They had a historic amount of starting line combinations last season. Uh, so much so that we were picking up guys off the street towards the end of the year. It was actually really sad. Uh, it got to the point I didn't recognize probably four of the five starters at some points, but they were projected to be well above average prior to the season and Trent Williams was banged up a lot. And if Trent Williams isn't on the field, it doesn't matter. I mean, part of the rank, most of the ranking is because Trent Williams is there to anchor that offensive line. It's it's, I can't speak enough about what he means to the team just being on the field. I mean, you have a whole different confidence with a guy like Trent Williams on the field. So him being banged up, I want to say three to four games last year. That was huge as well. But same people coming back, and then we added some some depth with the guy out of Louisville in the third round. So I'm excited about that offensive line coming into this year, especially uh, with Darius Geis back there. He's going to make them look good regardless. And speaking of not so great O lines, that's a good transition to <laughs> fortunately Chris's Bengals and Andy Dalton. So Chris, first of all, I'm sorry that you're stuck with Marvin Lewis. <sighs> Tell us what you think about Andy Dalton. And specifically, I've heard some chatter from some people that they think if the Bengals don't perform this season, one, Lewis will probably lose his job since they were already talking about that last season. And two, that if he loses his job, Dalton might actually be out of a job. Do you think that's the case? And if not, why do you think it's not the case? Or why do you think it is the case? I hate to at least to I hate to say that I want to see somebody lose their job because I mean it sounds crass like on the on the face of it right guys that's okay you don't we're want to see some listeners a week you can say whatever you want <laughs> <laughs> well but for the hundred people out there I'm not trying to be a jerk just letting you guys know but uh but when it comes to the Marvin Lewis led Bengals I mean take away the uh, I mean even though it's very hard for me to do take away all the wild card losses. Take away all the playoff, the the zero playoff wins. Uh, you know, take away the terrible things that have happened to Carson Palmer, like when you know when I thought he was going to be a star, and all those things that have happened. And you just and you just see a mediocre team. You just see a team that is just I don't want to necessarily say squandered talent because if we don't want to look at teams that have squandered talent in the AFC North, you can just go about I don't know about two hundred miles east to Pittsburgh, and then you can look at a team that squandered talent. But regardless. I mean, with the point, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that I would say that I do think that there needs to be a, I guess, a reboot on the at least on the in the head coaching department, because it just seems like that the offense is completely stagnant. It's very I would I wouldn't even say conservative is the right word to describe it. But regardless, I do think there needs to be a head coaching change. Now, when it comes to a quarterback change, I don't really know if that's really a possibility at this point. Uh, because the ones that the the quarterbacks that are behind Andy Dalton, I'd be I'm more scared of them than Andy Dalton. I know what we have in Andy Dalton. I mean, it, yeah, sure, he might be scared as I'll get out behind that offensive line, but at least he has a connection with AJ Green. At least he has a connection with Tyler Eifert, assuming he's healthy. Please God, let him be healthy. Uh, but we we know that he has enough enough talent quote unquote, in order to make wide receiver one, tight end ones, and you know, and so on and so forth. The guys behind him, Matt Barkley, that guy hasn't played since what 2016. And I think the last time, the last few games that he played, I think he threw like close to 10 touchdowns in three games. So I know Andy Dalton's probably done that in stretches of games beforehand, but at least you know Andy Dalton has also had games where he's either played the game manager or he's played the the gunslinger and been able to put AJ Green like at the top of the map. Also, uh, we're talking about uh, the two guys behind him. So we've got Jeff Driscoll. Uh, he was I think drafted in 2015 or 2016 to San Francisco, waived, and then we uh, then we wound up uh, picking him up. 
Uh, I think he's the the most likely in order to make the uh, to make the uh, the fifty three man squad. Like after everything's all said and done, but still, I think he has a number of issues behind him in terms of his uh, his arm strength. That I think that will be somewhat of a problem. I think if he was put like if he got thrown on the field because something terrible happened uh, to both uh, to both Barkley and Dalton, I think he could probably run the offense. It'd probably look like. Um, I would say probably something less than Landry Jones, if I had to guess, in terms of in terms of production. He could probably keep the offense running for a little bit, but then if he got met with a bunch of pressure, everything would just fall off. The, the, the wheels would completely fall off the offense. Um, but then the last guy, uh, was it Logan uh, Woodside? Yep. Yeah, from Toledo, if I'm not mistaken. So with him, I think they need like he needs to completely overhaul his mechanics when it comes to uh, both his uh, post snap processing and then also his footwork. Uh, I believe it was last year in the uh, did they play? I forget which bowl game that they played in. Uh, it escapes my mind at this point, but they played Appalachian State in the in the uh, the last bowl game last year. I think he threw something like three t- uh, three interceptions in that in that bowl game, and for each of them, you can go back and take a look that he d- does not know how to read the second level of the defense and adjust to it properly. And so, if that's a problem in college, it's going to continue to be, a, and it hasn't shown to be anything that he's improved on at all. And then also, part of the problem is that because he comes from Toledo, they also run one of those spread type offenses. So that his numbers look inflated in terms of like you know yardage, touchdowns, so on and so forth, but it doesn't translate well to the NFL. I mean, there I know there are a lot of there are a lot of quarterbacks that have come from you know spread type offenses have done well in the have done well in the pros, but at least in his case, because of his mechanical flaws, it's hard for me to see him continuing to do the make up that type of production in the pros. So between those, I still think that Andy Dalton is the guy. And with the Bengals' track history, it, I don't see them trying to trade or pick up a veteran. Or like if Joe Flacco winds up losing his job to Lamar Jackson, uh, which you know everyone's thinking that's going to happen this year, I- I'd be shocked if the Bengals like tried to pick him up and bring him over. Because I do think, if I'm not mistaken, with Dalton's contract situation, I think they have an out in 2019, or it might be 2020. But I think they do have an out in order to get rid of him if they wanted to. But for right now, I just think we're stuck with him, for, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not as familiar with his contract situation as you are. But, uh, Adam, what do you think of Andy Dalton? And I also would just like to point out that's probably the most airtime that Driscoll's probably ever has gotten in his entire life. Oh, so yeah. His family will be sending a bouquet to uh, Chris later tonight. Well, Chris just oh, happily accepted. basically tried out for Cincinnati local sports uh, reporter <laughs> right there, reporting specifically on quarterbacks. So <laughs> I don't know what else we, we, we need to add. But, uh, Adam, uh, th- throw, in, throw in your two cents there, and, and good luck after yeah, that. Yeah, give us your punchy Andy Dalton take. Yeah, he didn't have enough room to put it on the show sheet, but yeah, he already actually works for the Bengals. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't have enough characters on my Twitter profile. So that had to go. Um, Dynasty Owners Manual had to stay. Yeah, so weeks one and two, Andy Dalton was exceptionally bad. I mean, he's normally bad. He was exceptionally bad weeks one and two through four interceptions week one. Week two, he might as well have just stayed home. He didn't throw any touchdowns or any picks uh bring in bill laser now i'm not going to lie to you and say that the completion percentage stayed at this rate andy dalton is going to andy dalton but the first couple weeks with laser he had 77.8 percent completion rate next game he had 83.3 that's probably the only time andy dalton sniffed anything close to that high and that's on 30 attempts it's around his median so um that was a big boost. I think the problem there is probably Marvin Lewis. I mean, he's a coach that came out, just kind of did the Hugh Jackson thing where he blamed all the players. He actually announced that he was going to leave the team the day of a game. And then when he was asked about leaving the <laughs> yeah. team, he said that the players weren't on Twitter before the game. Meanwhile, every player is on the field warming up slash tweeting. So I know they definitely saw it. I think uh, Marvin Lewis is is what's got to go. Andy Dalton's probably okay enough. Now, the problem is they keep winning games. They didn't do it last year, but the years prior, they were perennial playoff team. 
and then just to get kicked out in the first round. So you can't really get rid of Marvin Lewis if you're making the playoffs every year, and you sure as heck can't draft a, a rookie. And then, like Chris said, he knows better than any of us as a Bengals fan, their contract situations are always garbage, their, their cap space situation. So they're not going to go get anybody. One name I will mention to look out for is that um, – the Jets have been very vocal about Teddy Bridgewater, and he is getting the same opportunity as Darnold and McCown to get the starting job, which is super promising to hear because I kind of got the vibe that he was just getting the chance to show that he could still play in the NFL, maybe maybe a deep insurance policy. Um, if he could still run, maybe he could go somewhere else next year. That does not seem to be the case. It seems like Teddy Bridgewater is competing just like the other two, going out there and putting the work in. To me, that means... In the preseason, Teddy shows that he's still Teddy, which is up in the air because you don't know what's up with that knee and mobility was huge in his game. But if he does come out and he is Teddy Bridgewater, you might see him starting for the Jets. But they have also been vocal saying they're not afraid to trade him either if Josh McCown and Sam Darnold prove that they're comfortable with those two on the roster. So that's somebody they might be able to pick up on the cheap, the cheap as – the Bengals. So that's someone I would look for. I don't care about any of the three quarterbacks on that <laughs> roster. You but, shouldn't. Uh, and earlier we were talking about dodgeball and am I the only Blazer. one who, when they say Bill Lazer, thanks Blade. Yeah. Razor. <laughs> Blazer. Yeah, <me> too. <laughs> yes. Um, Bobby, I, I have a strict, uh, never have shares of any ginger quarterback on your fantasy team, whether it be redraft <laughs> dynasty, best ball, Am I right to think that – to think no, number one, should I have that policy? Number two, is Andy Dalton maybe the exception? I, mean, I think it depends on your situation. Uh, I sold off my only Andy Dalton share. I'm very sorry, Chris. I had to do it. But I had a share of Andy Dalton. I sold him for the 111 and D.D. Westbrook in a super flex best ball league. That 111 turned into D.J. Moore. I would do that trade every single day of the week. Yeah, it's pretty easy. And uh, it's he's not a player that I purposely look to not own, but he's not a player I'm looking to target and end up with on my teams. He's a good late-round guy, but he's not someone that I really, really want, especially because, as you guys know, the obligatory mention of Blake Bortles is coming. So <laughs> I figured I just had it. Yes. <laughs> Blake Bortles is my late-round quarterback of choice. And between Blake Bortles and Andy Dalton, it's just no contest. Chris, Andy Dalton finished, I believe, QB2, back end QB2 last year, or mid? I have no idea. I'm looking at uh, last year, he was, uh, I thought he was like QB, it's like 16, 17. Yes. Yes, okay, so really? High mid-tier kind of QB2. Uh, is that kind of what we can expect from him the next two years until his contract runs out? I would assume yes, because I mean, you look at you look at the team as it sits right now. I mean, AJ Green's still there. I mean, we're assuming from all the buzz around, uh, there's some guy named John Ross that's supposed to be playing for them. Uh, I have no idea if that's actually going to happen or not. Uh, Tyler Eifert, he's been seen in the training facility, so we we're hoping he's at least going to be back for the season. If not, Tyler Croft showed that he has the ability to at least fill in the role in the in the uh, in the red zone. Gio Bernard's back. I think he showed that regardless of if it's Mixon or Gio, either of those two can handle the rock. And at least they have, uh, what's the rookie's name? Uh, Mark Walton. I think the uh, the backup who I think he can he can play just as well as Gio in the backfield as well. But I think he also needs some polish. But regardless, um, offensive line situation has looked to improve since they got rid of Russell Bodine, who was just absolute trash. Uh, they picked up Cordy Glenn. They wound up, uh, they drafted uh, Billy Price. And it looks like his, uh, I think it was a pec injury that he had. It looks, that looks to be healing up. So on the whole, the offensive line, which I think was, I think from football outsiders, they were ranked like 21st in the past, like 21st, 22nd, somewhere in there. Um, but regardless, if they can continue in terms of the offensive line continuity and continue to build off of that from last year, I think that, I mean, how could he, get, I, can't, I guess I'm trying to, tell myself the story of how it can get worse. And regardless of how, like of how he's ranked right now, because I think he's ranked like somewhere in like the mid twenties at this point. And I don't think he's ever finished like worse than QB 20. So I think with the value that he presents to us right now, 
why not why not try and grab him at that price like if i could take him at that price and expect him to at least make it back to where he was last year i mean i i just think that the value is there from a fantasy perspective for us to pick him up yeah i think that i think that makes sense if you can get him for that price what do you think adam well, I, I think if you're going to pick him up, you'd have to pick him up now because his value might go up during the season. But you said two years was the question. One year, sure, I would love to have Andy Dalton on my team actually as maybe even a QB four and a super flex because I love to have four and just have that fourth guy that can actually contribute because then when you have an injury, you still have a decent bye week filler. Uh, but here's the problem. You mentioned two years out. Geo's leaving after this year. And Gio is the glue that holds the whole team together. Now, this isn't me saying he's the best player on that offense. It is very obvious that A.J. Green's the best player on the offense. But when something needs done, Giovanni Bernard's the guy who gets the job done. And if he doesn't get the job done, then no one does. It doesn't matter who they put in front of him. Jeremy Hill, Joe Mixon, it's always been Giovanni Bernard that comes in and gets it done. Uh, I'm glad he never gets the feature role, I guess, because he provides value as that PPR upside guy. But Adam he's going to be in with the hot anti Joe Mixon take too. I love it. Everything <laughs> he's just dropping hot takes left and right and doing it so casually. Wait, Joe Mixon, who's that? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Giovanni Bernard is going to be gone, and then AJ Green's going to be 32. Uh, be that what it is, he can still probably be a stud at 32, but it's going to be looking down for him by then. So two years from now is kind of bleak for Andy Dalton. I would trade for him now if that's your prerogative, because if you wanted to trade for him in season, you're going to maybe actually pay the the 111 price for him that that mm-hmm. guy should not have paid um, <laughs> to Bobby. Shout uh, out to Zach Wilkins. <laughs> yeah, I don't oh. think that I would have done anything close to that uh, personally, but maybe in season that's something that his value might get there and you might look to selling him just because – uh, I don't want to see really Andy Dalton without Giovanni Bernard, especially when there's going to be almost definitely a coaching change. Um, and then we'll see what Joe Mixon ends up doing. But he he's still going to be young, even if he is what everybody thinks he is, which I don't believe he is. He's still going to be young. And when I'm saying that Giovanni Bernard's the glue that holds everything together, he he just knows the offense. He's been there since a rookie uh, he just gets the job done. That's going to be a huge hit for them. I think people are really underestimating Giovanni Bernard going into free agency and what mm-hmm. it'll do for those Bengals. Bobby, what I'm hearing on the Afterburners podcast is Adam saying that Giovanni Bernard is better than AJ Green. Yeah, I guess that's it. So if you want to at Adam, Ooh. that Twitter handle again is at DHH underscore Adam. And you can tweet at him about why AJ Green is better than Giovanni Bernard, or maybe there light are up his mentions. Out there that agree with him. And if you do, uh, maybe you should tweet at some other people and get some other opinions than just Adams. So fine. it wouldn't matter much. He's on all my rosters anyway, so who cares what you guys th- think when you hit me in the mentions? Because I'm still gonna have him in the starting lineup. He's got to be on like six of my teams what Adam's AJ actually Green. saying is Giovanni Bernard 101 over yes. Odell Beckham and Todd Gurley yes oh. so final thought on the Bengals here I'm gonna get this get through this then we're gonna move on but final thought uh Marvin jo- Mar- Marvin, Marvin Lewis, Lewis. <laughs> everyone uh, always almost accidentally says Marvin Jones I wonder if anyone's gone up to him and been like oh so you're a coach in the NFL and he's like no but I am a wide receiver so I guess <laughs> right? I mean, uh, He'd probably be a better coach, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so Marvin Lewis, like, what is it, 15, 16 years he's been there now, 17. Since um, 2003, if I'm not mistaken, 2002, 2003. years has been mediocre. Is he or is he not the equivalent of manager Michael Scott? Oh, I was waiting for you to say Jeff Fisher and get your obligatory Jeff Fisher mention. No, man, Jeff. Oh, By the way, I, Jeff I, Fisher, I would like that. tangent here, but Jeff Fisher is being uh, – He's being quartered by Fox, isn't he? Yeah. And I really think he'll just go on air and be like, this is how you ruin a quarterback. I'll give you the step-by-step of how to destroy a quarterback. Could you imagine Jeff Fisher and Marvin Lewis in the box together? (laughs) That'd be the worst game. It would just leave wherever they felt like it. Yeah. Like Jeff Fisher's talking about the offense and the quarterback, and then Marvin Lewis is talking about like the 4-2. And it, like whatever it, like his scheme that doesn't work in defense, you're like, dude, what? 
What are we? What are you talking? Just about? add malarkey yeah. to talk about exotic Smash Mouth, and you've got it. Exotic Smash Mouth. That'd be like the perfect. I mean, that'd be like perfect trio right there. <laughs> That's awful sports announcing. I actually kind of am intrigued now. I kind of want this to happen. Can Fox make this make this happen? Might Just as well, to see how bad it is. Yeah. I mean, not not doing much else. I'm anointing you two to be in charge of the social media campaign, and we'll help you out, of course, to get Marvin Lewis and Jeff Fisher in the press box together because I would listen to every game and love it. We'd have content for weeks as 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 fantasy football experts. He wouldn't even have to quit his job. He doesn't do anything. Yeah, I'll do my part the next time. I mean, I am like 45 minutes outside of Cincinnati. The next time I'm in the city, I will go looking for Marvin Lewis to petition for him to join the Fox Sports uh, the news analyst group. I mean, that would work out well for you because then they'd get a new coach anyway. Yeah, exactly. So that's a, it's a win-win for me. So, I mean, I... All right, we're going to do it, guys. Jeff Fisher, Marvin Lewis, 2019 in the press box. That's what we want. Uh, we are going to go on. We do have to go on as much as we want to push this. Uh, we'd want to talk. Uh, we, we had a couple questions for you. I'm going to start with Bobby here because, you know, this is our show, so we're just going to do that. And so, you guys, obviously, this is we were just talking about the quarterbacks of your teams. Uh, we're pretty high on a couple guys. I'm specifically high on, like, Russell Wilson because you pushed me in that direction. Main question is it seems like you guys kind of, I'm listening to, to Adam and Chris talk a little bit. You, you kind of focus on the, a few guys you like to keep around on different teams that you really, really like. Who's a, who's a quarterback that you didn't get your hands on this year, Bobby, that you, you were like, oh, I really want to share him and I didn't get him? Who's your favorite one? So it's interesting because I play in so many different super flex leagues that I have a ton of different quarterbacks. But Of course you're going to answer that. Way. One guy that I have zero shares of is Baker Mayfield, and I would really like to get my hands on Baker Mayfield's eclair, I guess, going back to last week's episode uh, because – we just went after dark here, but I would really like to uh, get my hands on Baker Mayfield because I do think that he is going to be that franchise quarterback for the Browns. Uh, to me, it was, I had Josh Rosen as my number one rookie quarterback, but Baker Mayfield was close. And then because of the situations that they both found themselves in, Baker Mayfield actually jumped in for my number one rookie quarterback. And it really bums me out that I won't be able to follow him from a fantasy perspective. So basically what I'm saying is if you're in a league with me and you have a Baker Mayfield share, you can probably send it to me and I might even overpay just to have him on my team. That Baker E. Claire coming in hot from Bobby. Same uh, I, would say, I would say for me, uh, the one quarterback that I've been trying to target, but I just have not been able to pin his value down is Lamar Jackson. Like I'm trying to get more Lamar Jackson on some of my, on some of my teams. And each time, like, I think that I should like, I, I'll be able to pick him up, like regardless of where I'm sitting on the draft, and you always get sniped like two or three picks before me. Uh, but I do think that regardless of the 2018 situation, like if he's going to wind up, uh, you know, playing this year, Joe Flacco survives for another season or whatever. I mean, he is going to take over that role at some point in the near future. I mean, if you just look at the coaching staff, you look at all the moves that the Ravens have done, like prior to drafting him, this sets up for this is going to be Lamar Jackson's team. I mean, the, the coaching staff, I mean, you got the guys that worked with Tyrod Taylor. You got the guys that worked with Colin Kaepernick. I mean, you got the guy, I mean, they brought in RG3, which at the time, like when they, when they signed RG3, I was like, wow, like why would they, why would the, why would the Ravens pick, you know, pick up RG3? who is like stylistically so much different than Joe Flacco. And then when they traded up and picked him at like at 31 or 32, rather, I was like, ah, now it all makes sense. So that they, they want him to play. They want, they want Lamar Jackson to play. Okay. So that makes sense. So regardless, I do think that his arm strength, his footwork, and then of course the, the rushing, I mean, all of it's there. I mean, the kid has the tools. He has the work ethic. You're already seeing all the, all the clips on Twitter of what he's capable of doing. I think he's going to be a stud. So, yeah, I, if I can pick him up more, I'm, I'm probably going to try and package some deals together here over the next couple of weeks if I can. But regardless, I, I wish I could get some more of Lamar Jackson. Yeah, it was super hard to kind of figure out his value, isn't it? Like I, some people have him really high, some people have him really low, and it's depending on the owner, basically. It, it, it really is. So, I mean, I'm, I'm tr still trying to figure out myself. But regardless, I mean, yeah, I wish I could get him. Yeah. Adam, who's your guy? Well, before I hit my guy, I just wanted to say that I traded Jarek McKinnon for the 1-9 in a super flex and got Mayfield. So, Bobby, if you want to go get him for free, go get Jarek McKinnon first. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad plan because if I had 
this is again another uh, tangent here but if i had Derek mckinnon i would be selling him at his current value because i just don't see a way that it goes up no way no and then also on lamar jackson i think it says a lot if rg3 makes the team that'll be a, a big tell because i had the same exact thought process as you is which I picked him up for the same reason that the Ravens picked him up because I was going to try to pick him up in a bunch of leagues and he ended up, his value just got too high. My guy's Deshaun Watson. I would never own him on a team because he costs so much and he's technically due for so much regression, but I just love the guy. I love watching him play. It's just, it astonishes me. It it reminds me of Aaron Rodgers, but almost more exciting, which hurts to say, but (laughs) he's he's a better he's a better athlete which is it's really hard to say but Aaron Rodgers is a little more sneaky than than Deshaun Watson might be even though Deshaun Watson did have that crazy little spinorama where he kind of undertook the ball to Lamar Miller but the the weapons aren't really there for me for his price mostly because I think Will Fuller's really bad uh go Kiki Kuti uh I do like Lamar Miller a little I wished I loved Foreman so much that injury hurt, but that's all the reasons why I wouldn't be able to pay up for him, especially since he costs almost about as much as Russell Wilson for me now. And Russell Wilson's easily my QB one. That's why I've got him almost everywhere. If I don't have Russell Wilson, I've got cam. That's pretty much how my teams line up. By the way, like we said earlier, where we're not contractually obligated to say Alex Smith is great working for two quarterbacks. You're not contractually obligated to come on afterburners and say that Russell Wilson is your QB one. <laughs> so that is Adam's take. That's not a take we're forcing on him, but we appreciate it nonetheless. This is funny because I never really like pegged Russell Wilson as the guy. And then after Bobby showed me all the numbers and stats and he beat me down to a, a little nub, I was like, you know what? Like Russell Wilson is number one. I, I think you're right. But um, yeah, no, they're not contractually obligated to mention to mention no, and Deshaun's another guy just to do like a second round or comment on Adams that I don't have any shares of. And it makes me sad because like Adam said, I just love watching him play. And I know he's going to have touchdown regression or whatever, but I almost see him. It's similar to what Adam said. Of, I see him almost like a cross between Rogers and Russell Wilson. Perfect. Yes, yeah, exactly. Hit that. But just watching him play is just, he plays an exciting brand of football and watching him go down with that injury was heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, like, I, I would like to see it a little more from Deshaun Watson. Like, I know he he scorched everyone for about six games and, and just destroyed him. And the injury was was tough to watch. But the reason I'll never own him is because he used to destroy my Gamecocks. Like, year after year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you can't have emotion or you're never going to own anyone. <laughs> this, this is why I never win. This is why I never win. And this is why all I do is host and, and make jokes and finish – you know, 10th out of 12, 12 teams. <laughs> I had to stop and pull over when the, when I got the NFL uh, little update on my phone while I was driving when Deshaun Watson went down. I did. Yeah. I had. I had. I actually got him off the waivers in a in a redraft league, but I got so emotionally invested to the dude. Not only was he putting up. 30 points for my team every week, but he was just so much fun to watch. I would have watched a Texans game over a Redskins game every day out of the week, and. When I got that news, I had to pull over and just scream. It was so frustrating. He is an awesome player to watch. Uh, I mean, tell me. I mean, I mean, you cannot tell me that the best game from 2017 was the Texan Seahawks game. I mean, that was the best game out of 2017, like by far. I mean, that was just an absolute slugfest. And Russ, I mean, and noticed, more offensive yeah. yards than his actual team. I was going to say, yep. notice how that involved Russell Wilson, who we've exactly. remembered <laughs> number one, and Deshaun Watson, who is his baby. So yeah. there we go. So I'll answer the question real quick, and then we're going to move on to what you guys are doing over on, on your podcast. Uh, so I think mine's Matthew Stafford, but not because – like I'm just in a lot of two QB leagues. The only reason I didn't get him this year is because – I mean, I just spent way too much on other on other stuff, and he's he's relatively. I think people are understanding now that you know Matthew Stafford, despite looking like a complete you know college frat boy, he actually is a very good fantasy quarterback. He's consistently a QB one. Not even that, like a mid tier QB one week uh, year in and year out. He's got five thousand yard potential. He did that once in his career. So I think that's the one guy that I, I have a secret. Even though I make fun of him for being you know like a a Georgia frat boy. Like I have a secret crush on him just for that reason. So um, Matthew Stafford, if you're listening, I'm 
I'm sorry I called you a frat boy, but it's true. You look rather douchey. So, uh, <laughs> all right, Sam Pig done. That's not even my burn of the week. I guess one day, since we have our QB handsomeness rankings, now we're going to have to do our QB douchiness rankings. Oh, he's <laughs> he's top. I mean, I'd say put him, and then in terms of douchiness rankings, I would probably put Roethlisberger like right behind him. Man. Jay yeah. Cutler technically hasn't retired yet, just so you guys uh, That's know. true. Yeah, he'd be, I think Cutler would probably be number one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cutler's there. I actually, even though I'm a Steelers fan, I have to agree that the, Roethlisberger is a giant douche. The and clip, though, huge. of Jay Cutler – did you oh guys my see goodness. that? Clip? That is so oh, hilarious. Oh, yeah. So, I was like, yup, that's exactly what I thought Jay Cutler was like. For those who didn't see it, it was his wife asking him what he's going to do with his post NFL career. And he said, I don't know. And she's like, don't you think you should be thinking about it a little bit? He's like, I'm not really looking to do a lot of work right now. I'm looking to do the exact opposite <laughs> of that. And, and that was him every Sunday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Coach, I'm not really looking to do a lot of work right now. I'm looking to do the opposite of that. Wait a minute, Coach. You got me blocking. I'm waiting. No, no, no. That's the way. No, I'm, no. The I'm not doing that. Play is when uh, they were doing the wildcat and he had to line up wide and he didn't even fake like his he, was. Oh, he was just standing there with his hands on his hips. I remember that. Yeah. That's just goes with Yeah, that's it. Oh, you were just yeah. adding. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the ultimate good. Cutler play. Oh yeah. But wouldn't you if you were if you just got a twelve million dollar contract for one year, wouldn't you think about doing nothing for a while? Probably, yeah. It's yeah. just funny that it's Jay Cutler. Yeah, I yeah. I mean just it's just the way that he said it. It was just like that is like complete that is cutler to a T, because just like, yeah, I'm not I'm not doing that. <laughs> and just like blank stare and everything. It's like what? The look on her face was priceless too. Oh yeah, her face uh-huh. the best he was drinking ever. his drink like Kermit the Frog while he said it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Jay Color reality show. I love. Let's let's get Jay Color in the booth with Jeff Fisher and Marvin Lewis. I think that would be no Jay Color on the sideline and Jeff Fisher. There we go. Yeah, in the booth. This will happen in 2020, guys. This is great. Thanks, thanks for that. So we're we're gonna go on. So guys, tell us a little bit about uh, Dynasty Owners Manual. What you guys are doing over there and and who you're with. Uh, I would say that, uh, so overall, I mean, the podcast, and I think I put this tweet out earlier today that the podcast, of course, is that, you know, Dynasty Owners Manual, and then it's supposed to be Dynasty Focused. But if you go through the podcasts and look at the people that we've talked to, uh, Carl Shafchik, uh, some dude named Bobby, uh, you know, Leo, um, I mean, Peter Howard, uh, Jake Anderson, I mean, and, and all these other people. I mean, the things that we've discussed, uh, player value, uh, league psychology, uh, going through and talking with Addison Hayes uh, you know, about, about Z-score and the things that he's doing on his site, Tyler Gee, same thing, getting into, getting into stats and metrics. I mean, these are all things that you can use regardless of if you're doing uh, dynasty football, if you're doing redraft or whatever. I mean, this is just for these are – it's, again, dynasty is in the title. But it's just about fantasy football in general. All the all the things that we talk about are processes, or evaluation methods. I mean, in hell, I mean Leo with the massive or with the you know, with all the notebooks that he keeps. I mean, all of it's about getting information or be or how do you use information. So I mean, that's our that's really our goal. And while it is dynasty focused, it's more about the everyday thing or the everyday tools that fantasy owners can use. And so tonight uh, we're supposed to go on and talk with uh, with Derek. And uh, get into like contract situations and, uh, and you know things of that nature. And again, not just for dynasty, although it is. I mean, when it comes to contracts, you're looking at things that happen year over year. It's still things that I mean we can apply to situations that are going on today. I mean, we're going to be talking about Dion Lewis and his contract situation, and how that's going to shape you know shake out for for Tennessee. And I know a lot of folks are kind of going back and forth over what he's going to do versus Derrick Henry. Talk about Tevin Coleman, his contract situation, is we're assuming he's going to hit free agency. So players like that, that while, again, we're looking at stuff that's happening in the future, has impact for 2018. Yeah, it's really awesome. Adam, you guys just had an episode uh, come out recently, right? Today. Today, today yeah. Yep, Leo mm-hmm. P. Yeah, we talked about the notebook, not the movie, although I wish we could have fit that in. But uh um, yeah, we should have done more jokes about that. We should have. We didn't actually take advantage of that. I noticed that when I was listening. Um, yeah, so we talked to Leo P about the notebook and then Scott Fishbowl. But what we're trying to do, the dynasty is actually the owner in this case, not just your roster. You've got lots of rosters. Most of the time people have numerous rosters. 
you're what matters. So at Dynasty Owners Manual, we're trying to build the dynasty through the owner. Uh, doesn't matter how good of an owner you are. There's always something you're going to learn. Had no idea what a Z-score was until we talked to Tyler Gee and we talked to Addison Hayes. Then I would have never known how to use FF statistics if I didn't talk to Addison Hayes and him run me through it. Would have never known how to evaluate wide receivers with their breakout age if I didn't talk to Peter Howard. Everyone that's been on has made me a better owner. And I felt like I was a good owner until we started the show. Then I learned I didn't know anything. I mean, John Bosch came on and taught us how to manipulate our whole league. So <laughs> you, there's infinite amount of knowledge that you can. And if you just go in there with a clear mind and don't say, oh, I'm already a good dynasty owner. I don't need to know this. That's bull crap because there's so much stuff that you have no idea that's out there. I mean, breakout age is one of the big, the biggest staples in dynasty to me. And I didn't even know it existed when I started writing, to be honest with you. So that's what we're trying to get done. Yeah, awesome stuff, guys. Again, uh, listeners, you can find that at Dynasty Manual over on Twitter. Really cool that you have uh, specific guests that have literally really specific information. And, you know, it's just really cool what you guys are doing over there to get, like you said, the psyche of being an owner. So thanks for coming on today. Uh, We are running low on time. So we are going to move on to our final and, well, final segment, the Afterburns. Probably our most popular segment, even though Adam – and this might be my burn or an early burn. Adam admitted he's never heard a burn of the week before or an afterburn. So, and that is not to say that I've not listened to the pod. <laughs> the drive that I specifically a lot to this pod just happens to be slightly shorter than the show. It's a forty-seven minute commute, so basically we figured that out. That wherever yes. he goes to, it's forty-seven <laughs> minutes, and he can't listen to the last ten. So, who wants to start us off with their burn of the week? Here, I'll go. I'll start it off with the with the burn of the week, and I'll keep it fantasy-related. I'll know, I think after that after that take, um, Adam's burn might be more personal, like aimed towards you guys, <laughs> but uh, I'll look at fantasy. So um, my burn, or at least my, my, my hot take, is going to be that um, I think Jordan Howard is going to outscore Devonta Freeman this year in, uh, yeah, in fantasy. I think, that's, I think that's a good possibility. With the changes to the offense... And uh, with his with his uh, you know projected workload, I think he's going to wind up doing better than uh, Devonta Freeman. Put so it down, Devonta Freeman. You've been burned. Freeman getting burned. Do you have a take this week? Me, I do. And this will lead. This is kind of directly related to our Alex Smith take. So I'm going to burn all the Redskins fans on Twitter <laughs> that called me out for burning Alex Smith. And here's the reason why. As you guys seen, the the NFL Network released their top 100 players as voted on by the current NFL players. And so we got to around number 20, and the list hadn't been, the final 20 hadn't been released yet. And we got into this debate about between Kirk Cousins and Alex Smith, naturally with the Redskins fans. They took Alex Smith and how dumb I was because clearly Alex Smith was going to be a top 20 vote. And lo and behold, he's not even on the list. Kirk Cousins, I believe, was at 76, 78. Maybe you guys can, uh, can, can add me there if you'd like. Uh, but it feels really good knowing that I knew for a fact that the players have no respect for Alex Smith whatsoever. Not so much that I would – I think I would put him in the top 100, but still, Redskins fans, for being homers and bashing me, congratulations, you are burned this week. Adam, if you would like to respond directly <laughs> to that, since this is the first time we've had the potential for someone to respond directly to a burn, feel more than free to do it. Oh, no, that's fine by me. I mean, I like I said, I hate the Redskins, even though I was born there. I, I just I'm the fan because I'm the person that strongly advocates that you have to have a reason for fandom. But I might as well jump into the burn since I'm already on the air. Um, <laughs> NFL players, stop doing dumb stuff, man. Like LaShawn McCoy, I don't know what you did. You may not have done anything, but I bet you that you wouldn't have had these allegations if you were doing some sort of charity somewhere. Then Mark Ingram doing steroids. You guys are already jacked. Pac-Man Jones just got in a fight in an airport. You're rich. You're putting your lives on the line. Literally, you are going to have brain damage more than likely. Enjoy it now. Let the kids look up to you. Make all that money. Save some money. Invest in stocks. Stop being dumb. That's my burn. Burning NFL players who are dumb. Yeah, we don't want to see you on another 30 for 30 or at this point 60 for 60 talking about how you're broke. Bro- it'll be broke episode nine. Yeah. Live your life and be like Marshawn Lynch. Yes. 
be like Marshawn Lynch. That's my sole animal. Just be here because you have to. Exactly. (laughs) So I struggled with this. I actually didn't have that much that went wrong this week, I guess, which is a good thing. Um, That's wild for you. However, I am going to, I'm going to use a positive to burn some people or some companies, which is I played a demo of a video game that I really liked this week. And then surprise, I ended up buying that video game. And the, what I'm going to use that as a burn for is it made me realize every game should have a free demo because if I could play that game first for an hour or two, and even if you cut it off and I was super frustrated when they cut it off because I was super into it and I was like, man, I could just keep playing this for hours. If you let me play it, chances are if I like it, I'm going to buy the game even if I know I don't have time to. So video game companies, you're really missing out on opportunities by not including a demo with pretty much every game because I think you could get suckers like me who play the demo and go, man, this game is awesome. I'm going to drop 50 bucks on this now. You hear that marketing and ad gurus on Madison Avenue? Bobby burned you this week. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's uh. And by the way, the company that did that was Square Enix and Nintendo. So good job, Square <laughs> Enix and Nintendo. You were smart, and everyone else is dumb. Look for an at off the social media account of the Afterburners podcast, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. This was a lot of fun. We'd love to have you back on when the season comes around. We can talk Matt Barkley or. Alex Smith, all you want. Oh, wait, no, it's Andy Dalton. That's right. It's a clean yeah, Matt Barkley. campaign, too, to get those guys in the booth and get Jay Cutler on the sidelines. And we'll yes. definitely follow up on that campaign as well. The co-hosts of Dynasty Owners Manual, Chris and Adam. Adam, lead us off where people can find you on Twitter. Chris, follow up, and then Bobby and I are going to sign off. Yeah, at DHH underscore Adam, and then please follow the, the Dynasty Owners Manual Twitter at Dynasty Owners. Yep, rate, review, and all that good stuff for the for the pod. And you can find me on Twitter at Chris Allen FFWX. And you can find me at Wrecked Fantasy. That's R E K E D Fantasy. Earlier they mentioned John Bosch, who always calls me a Twitter tough guy. And uh, yeah, Sam, where can we find you? At the Needy One Guys this is at Afterburners Pod. Don't forget to find us on Podbean, Stitcher, and iTunes. We need five more reviews. We'll get those. Free shirts rolled out with a design logo. What is Only the, the people toilet? who have currently reviewed are getting free shirts because we said free shirts for the first 10 reviews. We didn't get 10 reviews. So now those people who reviewed are not being punished, but no one knew is getting a free shirt until we get more reviews. I feel like that just ruins the entire marketing campaign. Well, too bad. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for <laughs> listening. Uh, tune in next week. Have a great rest of the weekend. Yep, until next time, Fantasy Twitter, keep it classy. Burns, burns.